All right, I'm going to show you how to set up this lab that I want us to do over the next couple of days. What I've got here is fishing line taped to a door frame, and I got a mass hanging from that. You can use any string. You could use a shoelace. Everybody's got string. You don't need to tape it to a door frame, but it'll be really nice because that's going to swing freely and not bump into anything. So however you need to set this up, set this up. Okay. Now what I'm doing is measuring the length of the pendulum. So I had a tape measure. This is difficult to do. I only have two hands, but I'm going to make the measurement off camera. It looks like it's about 55 and a half centimeters. Please use centimeters, not inches. And I'm measuring it to about halfway down the mass. You actually want it to the center of mass. So that's why I'm not using, say, 57 centimeters or 57.1 or 2. I'm using 55.5, maybe closer to 55.8. Next thing I'm going to do is start the pendulum swinging. Remember, don't give a big amplitude, a large displacement, just a small one. Get it going. You don't need to start timing it at any particular time. That thing's going to swing for a real long time. And what I need you to do is count out 20 oscillations, 20 full periods. If you have a setup where you won't be able to get 20, 10 is fine. But if you're using a doorway like me, you're going to get 20 no problem. Okay, so what I would do is I would start timing it at the top or at the highest displacement somewhere around here. So maybe I'll start it now. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Here's what my data table is going to look like. I measured the length of my pendulum to be 0 0.558 meters and I timed my 20 swings to be 30.6 seconds. The reason we do 20 is then if we divide that by 20 to get a period, it's going to be way, way more accurate than if we just tried to, to time one period. So I get 1.53 seconds for that length. What I'm going to do next is change the length and repeat this entire process. Okay, so I've actually taped up my pendulum higher, so it's not as long. Measure the length again. I'm gonna get about 46.4, say, and I'm gonna measure the time it takes for 20 oscillations. Repeat this process for, I'm gonna say, 10 lengths of string. Okay, so I just had a good time changing my pendulum lengths, measuring 20 periods, and then dividing by 20 to get the period. This is my data. I actually didn't know when to stop, and I did 11 data points. I'm asking you to do 10 data points. If you're efficient, I don't think it'll take you much longer than about 20 minutes once you got everything set up. Okay, so this is what your data should look like. Again, you measure the length of your pendulum. If you're using kind of a large mass like me, it has to be to its center mass. Raise the pendulum. It doesn't matter how high as long as it's not very high. So you don't need to have the same height for all of these as long as it's not super big. Try to keep it 10 degrees or lower. And again, you don't need to start the timer when you start the pendulum. Just push it and let it swing for a while before you start the pendulum. Or excuse me, before you start the timer. Count out 20 full periods then divide by 20 to get this.